like this music more. <laughs> but oh, I might have. Get the song out of here. That was some good funky beats. Like a great way to start. Hi everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Christina Sleeper, and welcome to another installment of Taste from Home from my home kitchen here in Los Angeles. How is everyone out there today? As you can see, I'm feeling a little French today. Does it show? I thought this was a pretty good look. Très bien and c'est bon, if I do say so myself. Yes. So, yeah, we're here for another episode, another installment of Taste from Home. And, um, you know, I thought that today, being so close to Mother's Day, I needed to pay a little homage to mothers. Um, I guess you know that um, it doesn't matter whether you had a good mom or a not so good mom, she is still the foundation of who you are and who you've become. She's been so influential and so, you know, like a real, like cornerstone character, if you will. And so I thought, what better way to pay respect to moms, mothers, mamas, and whatever else you call that uh, typically woman, but I will um, pay it out to you men now who are now mothers, or maybe you just go by dads. Um, a little respect and talk about one of the classic mothers in the culinary world and that is the five French sauces also known as mother sauces and um, you know these sauces are the foundation of almost every dish that has been kicked up a notch. And I'm talking about not just throwing your steak and potatoes on the table, but when you go somewhere and they have sauced those puppies up, that's what I'm talking about. A real saucing mother step up. And um, these sauces have been around for, you know, 200 or so years. They were, um, I guess, conceptualized, I wouldn't call them designed or created, but um, uh, Chef Escoffier, who was um, instrumental in getting French cuisine and French cooking on the map as one of the first and um, most premier of styles of cooking, hence the reason it's influenced all styles since then. And um, he came up with five sauces. And um, actually, the true story is he came up with six, but when they went and published the book, they forgot mayonnaise. Ah! And somehow, hollandaise became one of the mother sauces. But anyway, this, the mothers are bechamel, velo, um, espanol, and um, hollandaise. And, oh, and also tomato sauces. And um, today, I am going to focus on the white mother sauces. And um, now I'll tell you this, you may not be familiar with the white mother sauces, but if you have ever grabbed a can of Campbell's cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of chicken soup, you have taken and made a quickie American version of a white sauce. Now, you sidestepped the number one step, but you're going to get to a place where you're kicking up and adding a little bit of flavor. But, you know, I wanna say this. Um, it's so easy to make it from scratch and it only takes a couple of ingredients. So. 
you're going to cook along with me today, all you're going to need truly flour and butter. That is the basic for the beginning of all of the white variations of sauce and how we're going to craft our roux. Now, um, once you have the basic, you know, why stop there? You know, you're going to want to add a little something, something, and I always do. And, you know, I've got my friend Julia in the background here. I have used the art of French cooking as one of the cornerstones of my um, culinary, personal culinary education for more than 35 years. I actually was gifted this book when I was in college. And um, you can tell by the pages, they're so stained, they're so, um, they're so well loved because I realized as a really, really young adult who grew up with a mom who was totally influenced by the modern age and convenience foods, um, even though she taught me the basics, I know how to chop, I know how to brown meat, I know how to do all these things, um, my mom would grab that can of Campbell's or packet of um, brown gravy mix that was made by Durkee or something like that. And, um, you know, all of those things are dehydrated, concentrated, um, efficiently crafted basics of the mother sauce. So brown gravy, espanol, tomato, tomato sauce, that's your red sauce. Now, um, oftentimes now your red sauces, I will say, um, don't always get an, um, an, an addition of cream. But if you want to do a classic French red sauce, you're going to actually start with a white roux, like we're going to start, and then your enrichments are going to be the tomatoes and um, not just starting with tomatoes. And honestly, I will tell you, it really does add a little something, something to your sauce, especially if you're going to be serving it not always with like a pasta, like maybe your red sauce, you wanna serve it on top of like a nice pork chop or um, cooked steak or something like that. Trust me, it's so good. So, so yeah, so you're gonna need flour basic white flour and you're going to need butter basic unsalted butter and that is the start of everything now because we're going to be doing the white sauce um, which is always known as a bechamel or a velo now Bonus points out there if you actually know the difference in those sauces, and if you don't, you know, stick around for five, ten minutes. You know, I'm going to tell you. Um, but the um, the bechamel is the cornerstone, and from there we go everywhere with our white cream sauces, and um, that is a roux that is then enriched enriched with a hot milk and then given just a little bit of seasoning. When you go the velo route, you don't add the milk at the beginning, you add stock or white wine. Now today, um, I've got a little chicken stock that I'm gonna have on the side here. And who knows, we might we might do two sauces, but, um, but you know, the plan is to, you know, get one out and to actually, enrich it up. Now, I thought, um, seeing I'm going to be talking all about the Fab Fives, I thought of one of my basic favorite dishes that is made with, starting with the bechamel, and that is um, macaroni and cheese. And who doesn't love, who doesn't love macaroni and cheese? I mean, it's like comfort food extraordinaire. And um, the thing is, I've made it so many ways. I've made it by the box with, with 
with Kraft macaroni and cheese. I've used Annie's Kraft macaroni and cheese. I've spent all day grating and grinding so many pounds of cheese and then baking it in the oven for an hour and come up with, uh, it's good, but it's like, you know, like I don't know why I spent all that time when I could have had mac and cheese. Well, today we're taking all of that and consolidating it down into, or boiling it down, whatever you want to say, into a quickie mac and cheese because I've got some noodles left over from the other night and I think that these will be so great in a little side dish. This is about two cups of noodles and we're going to make about one cup of sauce. So um, I think that this will be a great little side dish or treat for Mark and I. So let's get started. Now, all you have to do, as I said, is take two little ingredients and put them together in a pan. Now, if you've been playing along and watching here for a while now, you know that I always use a cast iron skillet, except today, kids. Today, I'm going to use one of my heavy bottom Chantal stainless steel pans. Why? Why, you ask? Cast iron is a beautiful, great thing. It gives off um, trace minerals. Um, I love the way it cooks everything. It, it's a nice, thick surface, which is even. And so it is truly just in my opinion, it's like my other left hand, and you know I'm left-handed, so it's my other left hand. Um, I'm putting about two tablespoons of butter in this pan, and I'm going to let it melt very slowly. Like, I don't want to kick up the heat underneath this pan too much, so I've got it on about medium. We're going to let this just melt on its own. Now, um, the reason we want to use uh, a stainless steel or an enamel pot, probably one of the reasons that all of the French chefs or most of them use copper, is because it doesn't add anything extra. You, as the chef, add what you want extra. And so um, you want a sauce that's clean and pure right from the start. So I can't really use my cast iron skillet today because it may impart some other slight little flavors. And I just want white sauce. Or actually, it's the first step, a roux. So look, I'm taking the time and I'm melting this really slow because I will tell you the other thing. If I melt this fast and I turn my, my butter brown, we skip right into episode, my next episode, which would be brown mother sauces because a brown mother sauce is actually crafted with the starting of a browned roux and a browned roux is achieved by starting with a nutty brown butter and then you add your flour. So yeah, it's getting a little head there, but look, this is all nicely melted. I'm gonna get my whisk out. I'm gonna use my little whisk to start, I think. Where's the kanga? The what? The kanga. What's a kanga? It's good with your roux. Oh my God. It's gonna make me burn my butter. I, I don't know what to say about it. It's gonna be hilarious. You know, kangaroo. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the Australian mother sauce. That's the Australian, down under, <laughs> the kangaroo. Now today we're just going to make a basic white roux, no kangaroos. But you almost made me burn my butter, boo. Don't burn my butter, baby. Don't burn my butter. Um, okay, to my, wait a second, let me just get this in. 
Okay. To my, he wants to talk, and I said, you're going to make me burn my butter. He wants to tell me jokes. Kangaroo, what? Hello, bonjour. I have about a tablespoon and a half of butter here. I'm going to add it slowly to my, a uh, tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of flour. I'm going to add it slowly to my butter. Now, you might ask, but it's flour. Why don't you just melt the butter and just go from there? Like, why do you need to um, do this step where you cook the butter? And it's, you can see, we've got the camera really close here on Instagram. It's frothing and bubbling. But guess what? We still need to cook it for about two minutes because I will tell you, flour is raw. It's a raw ingredient. It's been milled, it's been processed, but it is not ready to eat. And that's why mothers everywhere say, keep your goddamn little hands out of the cookie dough. Because <laughs> cookie dough is literally raw flour and raw egg. And so all of us moms worry that you guys are gonna get tummy aches. And we, you know, we love you, but we hate dealing with your stomach aches. So keep your hands out of it and, um, you know, be a little bit patient. So I'm cooking this. I'm going to give it a little teeny bit more time. But as you can see, it is very nice and white. It hasn't even gotten any brown yet because I am keeping this moving all, all around. And it is looking so good. And what it is, I will tell you, it is now the basic for our mother sauce, which is a perfect white roux. Now, to a white roux, you want to make a bechamel. Oops, I don't need that yet. If you want to make a bechamel, which is just an enrichment of milk, you take this pan, you slowly remove it from the heat, and add your warm milk ever so slowly while you're still stirring. stirring to just avoid the lumps. And then we're going to cook it a little bit more. Now I'm going to switch to my bigger, my bigger whisk. Because now it's really important that you really incorporate all those little flour and butter bits into this milk smoothly. And to do that, you need to keep working them and, you know, the technical term, smushing. So yeah, so we're gonna do this until we bring this sauce to a boil. looking really good as you can see it's nice and smooth it's still beautifully white which I love now let me tell you this we're at this place right here where we've added our first enrichment and that makes this pretty soon to be a bechamel bechamel has the addition of milk, but you know what? You can still kick up a bechamel even further. You want a curry sauce? You could take and add a teaspoon of our Zen to this bechamel after it's boiled, and you would have an instant curry sauce that you could pour on rice, vegetables, chicken, Anything that you wanted to add a little curry flavor. Um, say 
you wanted to have an earth sauce. Well, I would, I would maybe start with this, but what I would have done on the side for my enrichment is I would have taken about a half a cup of wine, added a teaspoon of my Earth of Summer, and then I would have let that reduce down to about, I don't know, two or three tablespoons of liquid. So the flavor got really, really concentrated. Then I would strain out the herbs, add that liquid to my cream here, and then add some fresh parsley or thyme or basil at the end with a little bit of salt and pepper and serve that with, I don't know, just a quickly poached chicken breast, um, a piece of fish, so many things that you can just do. Okay, look, just in a matter of minutes, kids, I have made a can of Campbell's soup. <laughs> no, seriously, the Campbell's soup actually has a few more enrichments, and I'm sure in the lab, because I believe that um, French chefs, I, I read an article recently in this really great blog that I love, it's called Gastro Obscura, and they tell all kinds of stories of food. And in Gastro Obscura, they told the story of how Campbell's soup was made because um, canned foods were becoming popular. And they enlisted French chefs to make these recipes. And the reason there's a medal on the can of Campbell's soup is because that soup won gold medals in French cooking competitions. Competitions. I can't remember the rest of the story, but you can look it up, kids. It's 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 out there. And gas. I think it, it was Gastro Obscura that um, that published it. Okay. In just a matter of minutes, I have the foundation Bechamel sauce here. Now I'm going to turn off this heat because I don't want to burn it. Because look. It's beautiful, it's white. All it needs at this point is a pinch of salt. Get that pinch. And a little cracked pepper. Now, I couldn't find my white pepper before I started this morning, so you're gonna notice that just like me, my white sauce is now a little freckled, but you know, I'm not serving this um, in a competition, looking for a medal this week, so I'm going to be fine, fine with that. And um, if you've ever had um, white gravy or a chicken fried steak, chances are you will notice that they always put black pepper in it and it always looks just like this. So let me give this a little taste and see where I'm at. Because at this point, this sauce is fini. It's very basic. It's very smooth. It's very creamy. To me, it's time to now take this and kick it up. So like I said, you want it to be a curry sauce, you can add a little bit of arzen. You want it to be a mustard Dijon, Dijon cream sauce, you would add a tablespoon of mushroom. Or not mushroom, <laughs> mustard, duh. Um, if you wanted this to be the basic for a quickie mac and cheese, you're gonna add some cheese. And I actually have two kinds here. I'm gonna mix it in here. I have two kinds of cheese. Now, I will tell you also about this, um, about this white sauce. White sauces will get film on them. So if you're not going to be using this white sauce right away, you want to put it in a smaller bowl. Use your spatula to just smoosh it off, you know, get it all off the sides of the pan and everything, and then put it in a smaller bowl and press a piece of um, 
plastic wrap onto the top, right onto the surface. Or um, you could actually put a little bit of melted butter on top. But plastic wrap is just so simple and it keeps your sauce super pure. So that's what I, I would suggest. Now, because I'm going to be making this mac and cheese. Ooh, I didn't turn my broiler on. Let's turn that on. I'm going to add about a half a cup of white cheddar cheese. And because I want to give it just a little dash of spice, I'm going to add a nice little sprinkle, about a half a teaspoon of the original. I love the original, um, you know, the paprika, the California peppers, the little bit of pepper, the garlic. It just adds a certain little je ne sais quoi to this to this sauce. So look, now I've got the basics of my cheese sauce. And do you know what this bill, this, um, this, um, uh, I'm getting confused in my, in my own head here. I've taken and transformed my bechamel into a Mornay because a Mornay is one of the derivatives of the basic bechamel when you add cheese. So that's done. It's stay bon. It looks good. And I'm going to add this to my... Just drop my spoon. I'm going to add this to my my pasta. I've got a rotini here. Mark made it the other day. Let me taste this guy. Mmm. So good. I'm going to I'm going to warm up. A little bit of my chicken broth over here because I might need to add a little dab at the end just to keep this smooth and moving. Now, chicken stock, as I mentioned, is the basic of Velo, chicken stock or wine. And you can add a little bit of stock to any bechamel right before you serve it and it just kind of smooths it out and will um, keep it from being too cloying. Look at that, comes out really easy, not a mess. And now we're gonna mix this together. And you know, I had warm, I didn't have warm noodles, so that's gonna, you know, influence just the way, you know, this kind of looks here. I had them sitting out on the counter. They were made yesterday or the day before, but it's no problem. It's gonna mix together really nice here. And then, yeah, that looks good. And then I'm gonna add just a little dab of my chicken stock. Now, if you're making this for vegetarians, you could use a, a vegetable stock. Now, if you don't have like a uh, vegetable stock on hand, like, geez, I'm getting stuff everywhere now. It seems so neat and easy. Buddy, I need Buddy. But he's gone, people. I'm a grandma without a grand dog. Buddy has gone to live down south of the border in Mexico, and he is living his best dog life. Okay, so there's my mac and cheese. And what I'm going to do now is melt a little bit of, mm, that's gonna be so good. I'm gonna melt a little bit of butter, a little bit more butter, and I'm gonna toss some breadcrumbs in it. I have panko here. 
and they're great to have on hand. Whatever kind of breadcrumbs you have on hand will do. But I will say this also, kids, don't throw out your bread because um, your bread toasted can be the foundation to so many wonderful breadcrumbs. This is a small amount of breadcrumbs that I'm going to have here once this melts. I'm going to, rather than opening more um, butter right this minute, I'm just going to add a dash of olive oil. If you take one thing, any one thing from any show that I've, I've done, kids, I want it to be improvised. You know I'm an actor. You know that's how I roll. I'm always... I'm always improvising. I always have to be ready right on my feet with whatever gets thrown my way, whether it's on camera, whether it's in the kitchen, whether it's just in real life. It's not, um, it's not what happens to you. It's how you react to what happens to you. And that is the basis of, of improvisation. So, you know, I was a little bit less than a, a, a tablespoon of butter. I wanted about a tablespoon. I added a, a drizzle of, um, of olive oil. No problemo. I'm putting about a half a cup of my hand-cooked bread, bread crumbs right in my bowl here. I'm going to add some more original to these bread crumbs so they're spicy on top. And then I'm going to put my butter in and mix that around. This is going to form my yummy quick topping for this beautiful and easy mac and cheese so that you don't have to wait. Look at that. You don't have to wait until a holiday or the weekend to have this amazing dish. All right, so check it out. There's the pasta with the bechamel that I turned into a moray and gave a little spicy kick with my original. Now I'm going to add a sprinkle of Parmesan. I have Parmesan Reggio here, and um, I'm going to put that right here on top, just a little, because this is, you know, this is a treat. This is like, I mean, this I guess could be like, um, this could be enough for one person, like if, you know, if I was making like say at lunch, like if Lydia was young and she was coming home from school, you know, she used to love to have macaroni and cheese after school and what kid doesn't. And, you know, I would prefer her having um, macaroni and cheese to so many other, you know, quick snacks. I think, I don't think she really liked it, but I remember kids always had go-gurts and granola bars and I don't know it was always sweet stuff but I always made sure that Lydia had a good breakfast protein based eggs for breakfast and then you know in the afternoon especially if she had sports or something like that I would make sure that she had a good snack again with some you know better I guess better carbs not you know I'm not going to say they're the greatest but um Okay, look. Is that good? That's so easy. I'm going to put it in the... Uh, I'm going to put it in the oven. And I'm going to broil it. Now, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. We'll see. We'll give it about... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a timer on. We're going to give it about five minutes. I don't want it to burn. I'm going to give it about five minutes. I'm going to get 
catch my breath. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about these mothers. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned, I learned, well, I have two of my very, very important culinary arms right here. I started out here, kids, and I'm not ashamed to, to um, talk about how how influential Betty, Betty, um, Betty White, haha, <laughs> she, her too, Betty Crocker was on my learning how to cook. And, um, you know, she's got a basic white sauce in here, but she has a basic white sauce with mushrooms, which you would probably put on chicken or fish. And, hey, I can't remember the name of that one off the top of my head, but let's look because the one that I've been using since my 20s. She has so much information on white sauces. Okay, so, you know, you make your bechamel. From your bechamel, you take the next step, as I said. You go you go the, the milk route, you've got, you've got um, a cream base. You go the velu route, you have added um, to your base a stock or wine. You can also, by the way, then add creams to that. Um, I mentioned the herbs. Where's the one with mushrooms? Capers. Ooh, capers are so good. You know what you have to do just with your basic, your basic bechamel, salt and pepper, a splash of lemon, and then you add your capers. It's so good over like a freshly grilled fish or chicken. Um, <clears throat> where's the mushroom sauce? Mustard, anchovy, capers. Mock Bernard, light curry. I don't see her mushroom sauce, but basically <clears throat> what you would do is you would take about a half a cup to a cup of mushrooms, saute them very well to get all of their waters out in the um, in a saute pan, uh, in butter, add a little bit of salt, add a little bit of garlic if as you want, make your roux and your bechamel as we did and then when it's enrichment time you would add those mushrooms and it just honestly is so easy easy to do now you know i, I kept it simple today because uh, there's so much going on um everybody is just you know trying to get back to whatever our new normal is so you know there's there's games on the weekend there's shopping there's places to go friends to see work to do all of those things so i really wanted to share one of these you know mother foundations oh i see some people out here okay let's say hi i can't see if you're out here every time i try to look at facebook you know you i lose you so uh, anyway, um, so I really thought, you know, you're going into the season. Um, you're going into next weekend's Mother's Day. We also have the Kentucky Derby, graduations, wedding showers, baby showers, weddings, all of these things are coming up and you need a little mother's helper in your pocket. And that's what I think of when I think of the, um, the foundational white mother sauces of France. And, um, you know, as easily, I could have made a quickie lasagna with my bechamel that was turned into moray. I wouldn't have used cheddar. I would have used all Parmesan or maybe even some mozzarella. And I would have made a very cheesy moray and I could make a quick lasagna with crepes. Say bon. So I'm sticking in my fresh theme, but um, maybe I'll do that for another show. Um, but for now, you can take this sauce, you can add it to any like quick chicken, like say you bring a rotisserie chicken home, add a little sauce. It makes the meal so much more delicious. So let's check on our little Ooh, it's 
starting to bubble in here. I'm now going to move it up to the top. I'm going to give it at least another five minutes. And uh, I am boiling, broiling it, honey. Thank you. You got you some burrata. Oh, ooh, burrata. You guys have not. You guys haven't had mozzarella cheese until you've had burrata. I am obsessed with this lately. I've been having burrata and basil and tomatoes almost every night. It's so, so delicious. Yum, honey, thank you so much. Um, okay, so let's make a drink. Drink! Drink time! Um, you know, like I said, with with all of these uh, holidays coming up, um, I thought about what kind of drink I would make to honor my mother or to honor mothers. Now, if I was just thinking about myself, you know, I just have a glass of champagne. And um, my mom didn't really drink much. She wasn't a fan of champagne. She wasn't even a fan of quote unquote, real wine. She liked Moscato's, Lambrusco. <laughs> she really loved Riuniti. And um, it's so funny because I used to, I used to love Riuniti when I was in high school. I, would, I always drank wine. I never drank beer. And yeah, no, but my mom through her life loved Riuniti. But, you know, if she felt like getting a little saucy and a little mm-mm-mm, she would, when we were out at a restaurant, order a vodka seven, seven lemon. So vodka seven up with lemon or lemonade. And I thought I could take my mom's favorite drink and my favorite drink and mash them all together. And, um, you know, I, I mentioned recently that I, I won a, a bronze international award for my be happy jam and oh my god I just burnt it oh, oh. <laughs> oh. yeah be careful with that broiler oh shit um damn it phone. kids that was only I I should have had it for two minutes it literally happened at two minutes thirty seconds because I'm at two thirty six right now so nope. I'm gonna have to do a little scraping Tom with tongs and it's a good thing that my breadcrumbs are very thick because when i get this off and i'll be right back at my drink don't you love live tv i love it as soon as mark gets back and i'm thinking and talking and oh. that's my fault yeah let's blame mark everyone no, it's my fault. I, I had it on five minutes when it was on the lower rack, and then I put it up on the higher rack, and I didn't adjust in my head the time because I was thinking about other things. But my panko was on there very thick, and I'm still going to have a nice bit of it and, <laughs> and a char, a little char. Actually, it doesn't look too terrible. Um, you know, your mother would say, just eat it, pick out the burned parts. Um, because mothers, especially back in the day, well, mothers are busy always, but you know, it seems to me that there's a, a shift that's happened where mothers do seem to cater a little bit more to their, their kids' palates than they used to back when I was a kid. We were told, eat what's in front of us. And if you didn't eat what was in front of you, you didn't get dessert or you didn't get anything else. Or sometimes you even got punished. Like, I won't go into that, but yes, um, it happens. Okay, look, I've salvaged it. I'm going to put it in the bottom here. I turn this off just to keep it warm while we talk about our drinks. I'll be right back for that. See if you turn the glove off. Yep, I did, honey. Will you reach me that grapefruit? Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> I never know what's going to happen. Um, 
with the best laid plans sometimes just get totally jacked, hijacked. Um, so I wanted to make a mashup of my mom's favorite drink and my favorite drink. And so I think where I was at was I was talking about processing tons of citrus. I was at the, at the kitchen this week and, uh, I mean, hundreds of pounds because 300 pounds, 300 pounds, 300 pounds of lemon kids. It's a lot of work for these little nimble hands, but thankfully I got some help from Mark and I really appreciate that. Um, but that being said, uh, I want to, uh, take the notes that I received from the judges on my be happy and make any adjustments that need to be made. So I'm processing all these lemons. I've got three different kinds. I've got Eureka, I've got the Meyer, and I've got Lisbon lemon. And I, um, I'm gonna keep working for that gold medal. So lots of citrus here. And if you can tell by looking at this citrus, it is, um, it's a mixture of Meyer and Eureka and Lisbon, as I mentioned, but you can tell there's Meyer in there because it always gives this beautiful golden, golden color to your juice. And um, to this, I added about a half a cup of, uh, <laughs> I actually added my hummingbird food. I was making hummingbird food yesterday as well. And I thought, I don't really want something too sweet and syrupy. So I took my simple syrup and rather doing one to one, I did a quarter cup, which I do for the hummingbirds, of sugar to one cup of water. And that's what I put in here so that it's a little bit on the lighter side. So I'm gonna make my little drinks. Say hello to Coco Meringue. Coco Meringue! Bonjour, Coco Meringue. Como va tu? charred or just a little charred where you can just pull it off mm -hmm. yeah so I'm going to take and I'm going to put together about two ounces of my grapefruit vodka which is this two ounces yeah there's two and four ounces of my fresh lemon juice. And I'm going to shake it up. And I've got myself a tall glass here. Ooh, let's get a straw. Put it in first. Shake it up real nice. And then, rather than 7-Up, I'm going to top it with champagne. Pain. And give it a little fresh lemon because I still have quite a bit. Give it a little stir. And I present to you Mother's Little Helper. Mm. It's like my mother loved lemonade. Coco Moran says she needs Mother's Little Helper. She's, she's in Ohio again. Oh, she needs a Mother's Little Helper? <laughs> Cheers to Ohio, spring in Ohio. I hope your mom is well, and I hope that um, your aunt is well, and you can enjoy some time together. So, yeah, I call this a Mother's Little Helper, and I think with all of the holidays coming up, or maybe if you're just a harried mom, uh, you know, making the kids a little lemonade in the afternoon, make yourself this one. Mm. 
You don't want to add the extra kick up of champagne, but I love it for the bubbles. You can just uh, add club soda or, like my mom, uh, just add 7-Up. So uh, let's taste that mac and cheese. I hopefully won't burn my own lips now. Mmm. You want to taste any? It's good. Mother's little helper. Did you stir it? Yep. So if you have any questions about Whoa. mother sauces, ruse, the basic, mother's little helper, message me on any of the I socials. I thought that was amphetamines. What? Amphetamines. It's what Mick Jagger sings. Running for the shelter of your mother's little helper. I think it's amphetamines. Did you hear the one about the kanga and the roux? No. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring it full circle. He always like pulls me out. Mother, so he's right. I would love to hear like a second of that in the background while I taste this. Okay, seriously, kids, look at this. I don't want to burn myself, but I don't. Coco says, beautiful here. Spring has sprung, many blooming trees. Wow, that sounds nice. Let's do this. I can be so fancy. And I even could add a certain little bit of, it needs a garnish, right? Can you put truffle in the macaroni and cheese? Not today, Satan. But I could. Why are those corny faces? I don't know, honey. You are so good. You're really not Satan. I'm the devil. But I'm going to add this little chevinade. And by the way, a chevinade is when you cut an herb in thin little strips. Mm. I'm going to add that, just a little bit to the top here, just to give it a little color. What do you think, kids? How easy, how fast was that? Let's taste it. Ooh, look at that. It's steamy all the way through. You know I'm going to burn myself. i got to be careful. Mmm. On it. And I'll tell you, when I have made uh, macaroni and cheese, other times, other versions over the decades of making macaroni and cheese, and I have done where I, I let it spend hours in the oven, it gets done. And it's just not that cheesy. It's creamy, but it's just not that cheesy. The key is mixing up your varieties of cheese. Don't just add cheddar. Don't just add... You use American, oh, but some people do. You know, add cheddar, add a really good cheddar, add Parmesan, add Monterey Jack. Mmm, honey. Oh, you definitely want a bite of this. I'm gonna let it sit here. That is so good. The crunch. I actually, you know, after removing the burned bits, I think that I got to a perfect crunch on the top. Um, it's creamy. It's toothsome. I made it in like 15 minutes. I mean, aside from all of my talking and everything else. So, mm. on that note, that's our show. And um, I want to say, if you're celebrating a uh, mother here or in heaven next week, I send you, you know, the happiest, loving blessings to you and your family. If you're, um, you know, watching the Derby, I hope your horse wins. And, um, you know, to all the kids out there who are getting ready to graduate, congratulations to all the people who've waited so long to get married. Uh, I wish you, you know, the best wishes and congratulations, and I hope you have beautiful weather for all of your occasions, and um, I'm just going to say bye for now. I won't be here next week, but I will be here in two weeks to share with you about um, barbecue. So come back, 
And you didn't, oh, did you find that thing, honey? Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. I asked about it, but don't talk about it. Okay, so, yeah, so that's our show. I'll be back in two weeks. And for now, you know, sending you all my love. Bye.